Good evening and welcome to the Hoosier Huddle Podcast. I'm Sammy Jacobs. Along with me is Pigs.com writer Matt Weaver. We're here to discuss the big news in the Big Ten, which is the schedule drop for conference opponents for 2024-2025 football seasons as the Big Ten welcomes in uh, the USC Trojans and the UCLA Bruins. Uh, My initial thought, Matt, is thank goodness the Big Ten East is done, uh, and IU is out of the Big Ten East. It is something that uh, fans have wanted basically since the divisions were created. Uh, it's You get two new opponents uh, coming in. IU will face them in the first two years. UCLA comes to Bloomington in 2024, US, and IU goes out to, to USC in the Coliseum. I know that's not the road trip that IU fans were hoping for, in, in the uh, new additions, but uh, in 2025, IU will go out to L.A. and play USC. Um, the other takeaways from the schedule, it, it, I'm, I'm happy. Purdue is the only protected rivalry, which is uh, it's good for IU. It's good for Purdue. I think it's good for the Big Ten as well, uh, and also it's something under the radar. So IU only has one protected rival, but they have two um, two play teams, which means they'll play them both in 2024 and 2025. And one of them is Michigan State. I thought that old brass platoon game had become more contested over the last, uh, you know, basically over the last decade. Uh, since, you know, 2016, IU won it. They've won it three times since then. There have been some really close uh, contested games as well. Uh, I'm glad to see that stay on the schedule. Uh, but Matt, what are your initial thoughts uh, from from the schedule drop? Well, uh, just when I was looking at it, I mean, uh, twenty four. Obviously, I mean, not to say it's an easy schedule, but it's definitely more manageable than than the one that Indiana's been playing for the last several years, being in the East Division. Um, obviously, still some quality opponents, but you know, you don't get Michigan, you don't get Ohio State. I can't remember the last time Indiana hasn't played either of those schools. Um, 25 is obviously a little bit more difficult. It's kind of like the old Big Ten East schedule for them. You just kind of replace Penn State with USC, um, and it's out there. Uh, so that, that one's a little bit tougher. Um, you know, as far as the uh, the the way the Big Ten did it, I we were kind of talking before off air. It's just interesting, and I had kind of heard this, um, that there may be some teams that have only one protected game a rivalry and then some others may have two or, or even more. And obviously, you know, Iowa's got three protected rivalries, um, whereas Penn state has zero. Um, and then there's, you know, some teams with just one. Um, so it's just kind of, it's kind of interesting. Um, I think of the, the big boys, um, I think Ohio state got the, um, you can argue Ohio state got the best break uh, because they obviously get Michigan as a protected game, but then it's Illinois Northwestern and nothing. It's those programs, but obviously, you know, those are those are easier games than what it could have been lined up with a Penn State or maybe a USC or something like that. Um, something you mentioned to me that was interesting is we won't see Ohio State and USC, I think, until 25, yep. um, which you think, yeah, you would think that maybe that might have been a game they would have tried to, you know, with the new conference in 24, you know, you might try to have that. I mean, you could have seen that, see, maybe seen that game be like one of the first week games on like um, either a Friday night or, or Saturday in one of those prime games. But it's interesting that they're not going to play till 25. But it's obviously – it's I mean, it's still going to be tough. I mean, you're adding, you know, two uh, – USC, right, you know, is arguably a top-10 program, and UCLA has had, obviously, their moments. So the Big Ten's still going to be tough. But I, it, it makes everything more manageable for, for Indiana, with the caveat being they schedule the right way in the non-conference. And I know this yep. is something that you've, you've really harped on. And, um, excuse me, I know – Louisville's a game that we have talked about. They need to get out of that after obviously they can't do it this year, but for 24 and 25, you need to get out of those games and schedule somebody that's more manageable because you're still going to be playing nine, you know, pretty difficult games. Yeah. And it's been the whole big talk with the sec trying to go to nine games or staying at eight games and things like that. Um, You could argue that teams are playing two different sports like Ohio State and Indiana. They're playing two different sports. The end game is totally different for Ohio State is to get into the playoff, win the Big Ten title, win a natural title for IU. It's to get to the postseason. And in order to do that, and I think for the Big Ten in the Big Ten's best interest, too, you want the bottom of your conference to be better. You want to lift the floor of your conference. And that's what the SEC does. That's why they're 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 waiting around to see 
what this 12 team playoff does in 2024. Are they going to get dinged for playing eight games, playing that FCS uh, opponent? Um, or will it not matter where, you know, you want to get Vanderbilt the best shot to get to a bowl game. You want to get, you know, Mississippi state or Arkansas or, you know, Kentucky or, you know, teams that are on the level of an IU, uh, uh, Maryland, uh, uh, Rutgers, Northwestern, those, you know, mid to low level teams, you want to get them to six wins, get them to the postseason, because that's what this, these strength of schedules, the, well, we're playing in the SEC and we're playing eight, you know, eight really, really good teams. Well, they base those off of like, 13 out of 14 SEC teams went to bowl games. They don't mention that Kentucky went six and six and lost to Iowa in, in uh, whatever the music city bowl or whatever bowl they played it. So I, I think in the best interest of the big 10 and the best interest of IU, they need to get out of this Louisville series. I, you might take a PR hit, but you know what? Um, you you got to get to six wins and if that means dumping Louisville after this year, that's that's fine with me. It should be fine with IU alumni as well. Uh, the 2024 schedule, Matt, as you said, is super manageable. Uh, if people haven't seen it, we have it up on our site as well. But IU in 2024, the home games, you get Maryland, Minnesota, Penn State, Purdue, and UCLA. Uh, I like to judge schedules by matchup opponents. Um you could say they have three matchup opponents at home. You got Maryland, Minnesota, and Purdue. Um, and then you have two matchup opponents on the road with Northwestern Michigan State. Your other road games are Nebraska and Wisconsin. That is probably the easiest conference schedule that IU has had in, oh, I, I, I would say at least a decade, um, if not if not a little bit more. I. Uh, 2024 is going to turn into a big year. Uh, I think we both believe that Tom Allen is going to be back in 2024, unless it's a total disaster this year. Like talking 0 and 12 and something crazy, like unforeseen craziness happens. Uh, I I would expect Allen back in 2024. You have to use this season to build momentum to go into that schedule because of the flex scheduling. You're going to have a hard schedule like 2025, but for Indiana, you have to take advantage of the years that you get the schedule like 2024. You have to make those the years that you go, Oh, now we can make a little bit of a run. This is the year that you can win six, seven, eight games. Uh, and then, you know, with the non-conference schedule for 2025, you got to get those three wins because the 2025 schedule, like you said, Matt, you bring Michigan and Ohio state back on the schedule you replace USC, um, Penn State with USC. Uh, you also get Iowa at home, and Iowa's always tough. Um, and then you have to go to Maryland, uh, Maryland, Purdue, USC, Illinois. Your home games are Iowa, Michigan, Michigan State, Rutgers. That's a game where you're going to struggle to get six wins, uh, and you need to schedule three wins in the non-conference. And I, I don't know if the conference would give you a heads up, for 26, 27, 28, and down the road in terms of this this flex protection schedule. But you should know how difficult your schedules are down in the future when you're scheduling these games five, six, seven years out to go, hey, this is a year we need to schedule light in the non-conference. Uh, or this is, you know, this is the year we could afford to schedule uh, like Notre Dame uh, or Louisville or a team like that. Uh, so, you know, it's going to take a little bit of foresight with, with IU to, to look ahead and do that. But overall, I think IU fans should be happy with, with this with this schedule. Um, and we'll see what happens down the road with this this Flex Protect plus, uh, plus scheduling model. Um, I'm happy they didn't go to 10 conference games. I'm happy they didn't do pods uh, because you get to see some opponents that IU hasn't seen uh, in, in a while. Uh, you know, Northwestern, you get uh, Minnesota uh, as well. Iowa, they haven't played uh, recently uh, outside of that trip in 2021 and, and stuff like that. Plus, you get Ohio State and, and Michigan off of there. So, you know. Yeah, just it, look well, at the 24 schedule. It's, it's kind of interesting. 
Sorry. It's just kind of interesting going game by game. Usually you go through the last decade or however long it's been and, and, you know, you go, okay, Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State, you're kind of looking at three losses. Obviously you got Penn State, but there's a lot of games where you have a chance. I'm not saying they're going to win or they're winnable, but there are games where you can compete. And it's like you said, you call them matchup games, um, you know, and I, and, and I think that's a good, I think that's a good way to describe it. And there's, there's a number of those games on here when you go through the schedule where, you know, if you, you know, you, you have a legit shot to, to come away with the win and you're not walking into a game where you're basically like, let's not get hurt and let's not get hammered so bad that it's, you know, carries over for the next two or three weeks. You know, yep. one loss becomes three losses or something like that. Um, it's just, it, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I mean, you know, obviously we've been, we've been banging the table for a while that the divisions were a joke to be perfectly honest. That's as nice as I can be. It was the varsity and the JV for a decade. Um, there's a reason why the West, I don't think they've ever won the big 10 championship, right? Yeah. There's a reason why um, it's, it just, it just was not even remotely close, not even remotely evenly balanced. Um, and it showed, um, but the bottom line is it's, now you've got to make, take advantage. Like you said, of this 24 season, you've got to take advantage of this. I mean, I don't want to put, try to make any predictions. You don't know even what the roster is going to look like from year to year anymore because of the portal. But if you put together a solid team, this is a legit eight win with a little bit of luck. You could maybe win another game or two. I mean, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but you this is a schedule where you could get that many wins. You know, if you put it together and, and, and you know, obviously the staff does their job and they've got the right roster. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But, um, you know, it's it's going to it's it, you know, it, it wasn't sure how to feel when USC and UCLA joined. I got it. But it's kind of I think it's going to be kind of fun to see. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know about uh, um, the uh, we're definitely not road tripping to uh, to the Coliseum. I, I know that. But it'll be interesting to to uh, maybe do a road trip out there. I've never been there before. I've been to L.A., but never to the Coliseum. So um, in 25, uh, you know, hopefully you make that trip and, and get to see it for the first time. Yeah, well, we road trip to Nebraska with Rabbi. I can't imagine another two thousand miles after that with you guys. Exactly, <laughs> he just pushed me out of the car in the Rockies somewhere, um, and I'll I'll get there myself. But it, it's an exciting trip. It's exciting to have these two teams on there. Uh, you also get that late window in the in the TV schedule too when you come home from an IU game uh, or any Big Ten game. And you, you want to watch football, decompress at home. There, there's going to be that late night game uh, there as well. It's just adding more product. Now, I don't necessarily love where the sport is heading as, as a whole, but I, I think the, sched, the schedule is a net positive for IU. I, I do think it ups the stakes for 2023, though, uh, because you, you cannot bomb this year. You have to go into that schedule with some momentum and take advantage of it. And that now puts a little bit more pressure on um, on IU because you could – if you could get six wins this year and build some momentum, get to a bowl, you're setting yourself up to get to another bowl in 2024. I know it's way too early to start looking at, um, at schedules that far out and, and things like that, but yeah, you got to start thinking long-term a little bit. And then also – there could be a lot of coaching changes in the Big Ten over the next couple of years. Uh, you know, it's uh, Gary Barta, our, our favorite athletic director, a former athletic director in the Big Ten, is out at Iowa. Um, there are a lot of scandals there, a lot of scandals I didn't even know about with Ferentz and uh, Ferentz's son, Brian Ferentz. So maybe Iowa becomes one of those teams that goes into – some transition. You look at Mel Tucker in Michigan State, although his contract is outrageous. Um, you know, if he has another down year or maybe two down years, does that change? Uh, and then, you know, something that I thought I'd never say, Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern. You know, he's coming off of two really, really bad years uh, at Northwestern last year, one and 11. So there could be some significant changes in the landscape in the Big Ten by then and IU might be catching these teams at the right time and that's the luck factor that you go into it a, a little bit too um you, you know you catch these teams at the at the right time and in the past IU hasn't taken advantage of it you know you, you caught Michigan in a time of transition you couldn't really get over the hump eventually you did in 2020 um you had Ohio State in a bit of transition uh in, in 2011 
Now, IU was in transition too, but you you got real close from 2011 to 20, about 2015, 2016. IU gave Ohio State fits. Um, can you catch some of these teams in transition? Uh, and that to me is looking at the schedule um, and just reading the landscape of the Big Ten. Can you catch some of these teams in transition? Or you could throw Rutgers in there as well. You know, I don't know if they could get a guy better than Greg Schiano, but he hasn't taken that next step either. Uh, so, you know, we'll 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 see which uh, who's the biggest winners, who are the biggest losers in in the in the conference from this uh, from this realignment. Well, I think I mean, are you talking about the way they've done the, the schedules or just overall? Uh, we could do. Let's do overall. Um. Well, I mean, let's be honest. I think, I think, I think the teams in the East, outside of Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State, are winners here. I mean, because you're getting, you're not playing those three teams every year. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to have, like I said, tough games. But those are three. I mean, those are. I mean, those all three of those teams for this season are top ten. And, you know, they're, I think Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan's like, I think might be the highest ranked. They're both in the top five. I think Penn State's right there and the, right at the top 10. So it's like three top 10 teams almost every year. So I think, I mean, you could kind of, you could kind of put Indiana and Maryland and Rutgers and Michigan State in a hat. And, you know, I think they all, this is all, this is a, this is a break for those, those uh, four teams because you're not playing th- those three teams every year. I think based on, like I mentioned earlier, I think Ohio State got a break. Obviously, they're going to have Michigan, but I think Illinois. Like, if you look at like I before we came on air, they got Illinois, Northwestern, Michigan gets uh, Maryland and Michigan State. Nothing against uh, uh, those teams, but I would rather play Illinois, Northwestern than Maryland, Michigan State. Um, you know, and it's just interesting that that's that's the draw that they got. I think uh, the way they've redone this, I would say Ohio State really got a break. I mean, just kind of looking at it, but you know, I think like I said, I think the teams in the East outside of the Big Three are the winners because you get rid of the divisions, um, you know, and then some of the losers are probably some of the teams in the West who now have to start playing. I mean, I, I, a coach told me this at Indiana over an eight year period, obviously Indiana played Penn state, Ohio state and Michigan 24 times. I think Purdue played them like less than 10 over the same period of time. I mean, it was like single digits and obviously we, you know what we, we, we bring up Purdue because they're the rival, but it was just so incredibly unbalanced um, you know, and it, it was probably like that for a lot of those teams in that division. We just kind of focus on Purdue because we're at Indiana. But, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, how this schedule affects things. Um, but, I, you know, I kind of like it. Um, you know, I thought the, 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 the scenario that we had talked about where you had did like the 3-6 model, I think that's what you called it, where you had three teams that you played all the time, then you kind of rotated, I think, among the other six from year to year, however they did it. Um, that was kind of interesting. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see in a couple years, uh, two years, three years of doing this. Do they stay with it? I mean, I, I would assume they would. But are there going to be some guys, some people pissing and moaning about how it's worked out and do they try to do something different? But I, you know, um, I kind of like the model and it'll be it'll be fun to kind of watch it play out. Yeah, and it's looking definitely- at 24 real quick, looking at 24 real quick from a selfish point of view, really, the only bad road trip is Nebraska. Like this might be the easiest season of road trips that I've ever seen covering Indiana. I mean, everything is really close, pretty I much. Have to say that now there's going to be construction on every highway going to Michigan State, Nebraska, Northwestern, and Wisconsin. It's, uh, but I mean, it's not bad. It's really not bad. It, it, I'm no, gonna, I was looking at this. I was like, wow, this is pretty. You know, now, the, now we'll probably when I say that 69, I'll be all screwed up. So every home game will be like going to like Penn State. <laughs> It'll it'll take us forever because the 69 will be all messed up and we'll have to like sit in traffic for, you know, two hours. Um, But yeah, knock on wood. That's, that's the easiest road trip schedule I can remember since covering this program. Yeah. I think the, the big winners here are, uh, you know, Rutgers, Indiana, Maryland in the East. Uh, You get out of that beast of the big 10 East going schedule wise, man, Illinois takes a hit. Uh, Illinois goes from the West. Then in 2024, they play at Ohio State, at USC, Michigan at home. Um, then you get Michigan at Michigan State. Uh, Northwestern also comes out on the losing side as well. Ohio, road trips in 2024 to Ohio State, to Purdue, to UCLA. And then they get home dates with, with USC. 
Um, and Nebraska there as well. Like their schedule got harder. I think, you know, the, the biggest winners are those teams in the East. Uh, you know, some of those teams in the West who have been kind of scraping by to get six wins, get to a bowl game and, and things like that. Um, their schedule is going to get harder. It is definitely a way more balanced, uh, balanced schedule, uh, a fair schedule, I think, for everybody as well. Um, you know, Purdue comes out pretty easy, too. Uh, they're probably the winner in the West. You look at their 2024 conference opponents, it, you get Illinois, Indiana, Maryland, Michigan State, Wisconsin on the road, Nebraska, Northwestern, Penn State, USC at home. That's not terrible. You move to 2025. They pick up Michigan um, and Ohio State, but they drop – you drop USC, you drop Penn State. So I think if, if you're going to pick an overall winner on, on schedules, that's not terrible um, for that. But to me, uh, you know, the fans also win. I think you get to see uh, a conference that's definitely more balanced – you get to see some opponents you haven't seen in a while and you have a chance to, uh, to win some more games, which is always, always fun from a, uh, a fan's perspective as well. So any, any fine. Yeah, go ahead. You mentioned that 24. I was just looking at Illinois. They also, they also play Kansas and the non-conference. Obviously that program has come a long way. That's not any pushover. Um, That, that program is really is, you know, it looks like it's going to be pretty good. That is a brutal schedule in 24 for Illinois. You're not kidding. That is brutal. I mean, that looks that looks like the schedule that uh, that uh, uh, Indiana AD would put together for the football program. Yeah, I mean, it's, honestly, it, it's you're 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 exactly right. And I hate picking on Indiana's athletic department, but now that you have a more balanced schedule, you're going to have to schedule smarter. You're going to have to pay attention to when you schedule guys, how far out you schedule it. And we've seen it. If 2020 taught us anything is that these games don't have to be scheduled a decade in advance. They could be scheduled a year or two in advance. Um, when you know, hey, I, you know, when you know who your conference opponents are going to be, how many conference home games, how many conference road games and all that stuff, it's, you know, you kind of – you kind of want a, like a football general manager um, to to just oversee it um, to where, hey, you're going to focus on scheduling. You're going to focus on whatever the, the minutia of, of covering a, a football team and, and things like that. You know, stadium upgrades, uh, scheduling, NIL stuff, all that stuff that needs to be its own department uh, because you they need to to pay better attention to uh, while it might sound great to play Notre Dame in 2030. Is that really a sound smart decision? Uh, because you might get stuck with that, that year you're playing Notre Dame, USC, Ohio state, Michigan, and Penn state. You might get that, that schedule where you, you go and look at it, you go, well, there's five losses there. Where, where are you going to get, <laughs> where are you going to get your wins? So yeah. I, I think that in the next move, and, and that's not just Indiana's athletic department. I think you'll see a lot of Big Ten athletic departments have somebody like a scheduling guru to do that. And also, you know, who knows in four years what college football is going to look like. It could be two super conferences. You know, Washington and, and Oregon could join the Big Ten. Notre Dame could be a conference opponent. You know, who, who knows? Uh, but Going forward, you got to try your darndest to get out of this Louisville series and make it mutual, whatever, pay to get out of the contract, whatever. Um, you know, I know I'm spending money that's not mine, but pay to get out of the contract. Go schedule whoever you can schedule on short notice. That's a, that's a winnable game. And if you could get through 2023 with five, six, seven wins – you're kind of in business, especially if you get out of that Louisville series in 2024. Yep. So any final thoughts on the schedule, Matt? No, I think that's about it. It just, um, you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's kind of an exciting day. Um, 
Um, obviously, for not just Indiana, but for the entire Big Ten, you, you know, you, now we know when you're going to play the, the new teams from the West and then, I mean, I mean the West Coast and then also from, you know, the, what it's going to look like without division. So, like I said, I, I, you know, I think you made a great point about 20 and about non-conference scheduling because, you know, you can really set this program up, you know, to, to, um, to have some success if you can get those non-conference games right. And then obviously you still got to win some games in the conference, you know, to get, to get where you want to go, but it's, it's become much more manageable with this new format. Yeah, it has, um, it has, it has become much more manageable. Anything was much more manageable than the big 10 East. And I think I put that on the number one takeaway is that the, the big 10 East is dead. Thank goodness. Um, because that, it really made it hard. Some of the best IU teams that we've seen in recent memory fell victim to to the Big Ten East. And you know what? It wasn't as fun or as cool when Ohio State came to town, where it used to be, instead of every other year, it was maybe once every four years or once every five years, and it was like a big, big deal. Uh, you saw crowds go down. I think this will help attendance uh, in, in a lot of ways for a lot of schools as well, which – you know, with TV attendance, I, I don't know if it matters, but with TV making it so easy to watch multiple games, you got to get draw fans into the games and things like that. And hosting a team like UCLA um, and, and getting some of the, like, if Nebraska gets back on the home schedule, some teams that you haven't seen. And I think that's what fans are also looking for some variety, some new teams, because it got stale seeing Penn State. Michigan, Ohio State, and all that stuff. And I'm glad they kept Michigan State on the schedule because I do think that the the old brass platoon game was gaining some momentum, and I think that's pretty good for, you know, not just IU's fan base, but for Michigan State's fan base as well. Uh, it, it's anything to, to build up the college football culture at IU helps, and I think having a trophy game against Michigan State and having that on, on the schedule helps that. But, Matt – uh, any other news uh, out of the recruiting world? I know it was a, a busy, a busy week uh, for IU recruiting with these in-state camps. But is there more busy weeks in the future? Yeah, this. I mean, starting you know, starting here in about oh, um, you got some official visits coming up. Uh, the first big one will be the weekend of the sixteenth. I think there's eight guys, I want to say, nine guys, eight or nine guys set to visit. And then, um, you know, there'll be, there'll be some maybe like some kind of midweek type things. And then uh, um, uh, the 23rd will be um, – will be. I'm sorry, yeah, the 23rd will be another big weekend. That one's looking like over a dozen guys. And they, that list could grow. I mean, I'm getting stuff almost every day. Um, but June is a big month. This is official visit month. Um, and right now, I think Indiana has at seven commits. Uh, would not be shocked if by the end of the month, um, they're pushing double that. I'm not saying they will, but it wouldn't shock me. I, 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 I would be more surprised if they only get a couple commits than if they got five, six, seven commits. So I, I think they'll get they'll add some more guys. Um, and you know, it should be an exciting month for the program because you know, obviously, recruiting is is a big part of it. And they've got some good dudes coming in. There are some quality players coming in. Some of them are going to wait till their season. But, you know, a lot of times guys say that and then they end up committing at the end of June because they just want to get done with it and they're tired of dealing with it. Um, and July's a dead period, so there's not much going on there. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. I, I think they've got off to a pretty solid start so far in this class, um, you know, and, and we'll see how, how they can finish off. Yeah, as always, thank you, Matt. Um, you can read him on peaks, uh, peaks.com at and follow him on Twitter at MB underscore Weaver as well. Enjoy watching future Yankee third baseman Ellie De La Cruz while you still can. <laughs> um, hitting rockets all over the park. And, uh, you know, enjoy the summer. We'll talk again soon. Anyway, that does it for today's podcast. If you have been, uh, hit HoosierHuddle.com. We have all the schedule breakdown, initial thoughts. We'll have more thoughts um, from the rest of our writers at HoosierHuddle.com as well. Follow mm -hmm. us on Twitter at Hoosier underscore Huddle. We have some important uh, competitions going on for best logo on the podcast network. We took down the four horsemen of Notre Dame last week. Uh, we're taking on the Sons of Saturday from Virginia Tech. So uh, we need your help 
there as well. Come click vote um, and, and everything. Enjoy the rest of uh, enjoy the rest of your week. And uh, football will be here as uh, you know as, as soon as summer's over. But I'm not going to wish away summer vacation. Um, somebody else could do that for me. But enjoy the rest of the rest of your evening. Enjoy the breakdown of the the schedules as well. And you know, dream of that trip out to USC. Start saving. Uh, so Matt, Rabbi, and I don't have to road trip the 2,500 miles uh, where somebody is sure to not make it out of there alive. So thanks for joining us.